Let's get to Lard Fries, who is the CEO of NN Group. Lard, very good morning to you. Always a pleasure speaking to you, sir. How would you typify the quarter? It's a great start of the year. Uh, I mean, operating result up, uh, sales uh, very buoyant, uh, expense reductions continue progress with the integration of Delta Lloyd and a strong solvency two ratio. So I think we're off to a very good start of the year. Um, great, congratulations on that. Why do you think the rest of Europe appears to be in the doldrums? And dare I say, you don't have to go too far within asset management, wealth management, um, banking services, etc., for people to get very gloomy all of a sudden. Yeah, well, of course, we're also seeing in our asset management business, which is part of the overall industry, obviously, um, we're seeing also there a, a little bit of weakness and challenging times ahead, challenging times. But at the same time, they are producing also this quarter, they've produced uh, a net positive uh, flows on the third party side. So we're continuing also in asset management to strengthen our business, to focus on key strategies and to ensure that we continue to, uh, to build a sustainably good business there. Can you tell me what those strategic priorities are in asset management as well? Because beyond uh, integration of asset managers, I'm struggling to see the differentiation of the active guys and the wealth managers out there uh, from the passives as well. So what is the, the fight back strategy? Focus, focus, focus. It's focus on key strategies. Uh, it is ensuring that you have a relentless dedication to good client service and obviously efficiency. So uh, making sure that you uh, produce against the lowest possible cost, the highest client service, and, very, and focus on very particular strategies, which in our case is multi-asset, ESG-type strategies, uh, high conviction, uh, 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 beta and fixed income uh, specialties, etc. So that's what we do. Um, Lard, if I could take you to Japan for a moment here, I was intrigued by the, uh, the results from the three major Japanese banks, which look quite troubling, actually, for the growth momentum in the Japanese economy. How is your business going to fare, given that some of those uh, growth headwinds appear to be showing up now in Japan? Well, we've seen in the first quarter uh, an outstanding result of our Japanese business with a very strong and excellent growth uh, uh, profile there, which was uh, uh, driven by a couple of things. First, by uh, good distribution and sales efforts, but also by an emerging expectation that the tax rules around our products would change and that, that had an impact as well. Moving forward, we believe that our business, which is fully dedicated to serving the needs of small and medium business, medium enterprises in Japan, is very well positioned. We're there for 33 years. We are focused completely uh, at that niche, and uh, we're dedicated to that niche, so we will continue to build a business that has shown uh, very good results. As you point out in your own statement, there's uh, continued movement, uh, continual movement in, in the regulatory regime around insurance product at the moment uh, and uh, pension product, uh, particularly in Japan at the moment with potential shift in the tax treatment. Uh, again, can I ask you, I mean, how do you manage these regulatory changes and what do you think any meaningful impact might be on earnings going forward? We have uh, seen uh, a number of regulatory changes, uh, not only in Japan, but also in other pieces uh, of, the markets, of the markets in Europe where we are operating in the pension area, for instance. Uh, we are very experienced in dealing with these, uh, with these periods of change, as has been demonstrated by the long history that we have with that. Now, when it pertains to Japan, we believe that in the near term, sales may be held back but at the same time, we also believe that the new tax rules will encourage persistency of our enforced books. Uh, enforced books. So we believe that um, the dividend capacity of the business remains intact and that also we will adapt like we've always done and then tap into the continuing underlying need for our SME customers to take care of their retirement and to plan for that and to protect their key, their key personnel. Can I ask you about the M&A landscape then going forward? Obviously, you, you've, you've bedded down the Delta Lloyd business here. You, you are sitting on uh, a sizable amount of cash at this point, but this is a whole segment of the market that is still impacted by these very low interest rates and other challenges for the financial services sector. What role do you see yourself playing in uh, M&A going forward? M&A is a game of opportunity meets discipline. 
And we are a company that always looks for opportunities to strengthen the business with the priority of those mar in those markets where we already have a presence. Um, so we're always on the lookout, but again, M&A is a game of opportunity, but most importantly also of discipline. We have very strict financial and non-financial criteria, and if we believe it's the right thing to do, we'll act, and if not, we'll not. Uh, just one from me to finish off there. Uh, net operating ROE, 9.9% .9 as opposed to the previous figure a year ago, 7.3%. Great trajectory there as well. Uh, can we see more of the same going forward? Is it going to carry on moving upwards or actually have you reached a, a plateaued level? We have medium-term targets. The, the most important one is 5 to 7% growth of the net operating earnings uh, measured over the medium term. Um, we are continuing to do all kinds of things to improve uh, our earnings profile, our return on equity, our return on capital, uh, and we do that by growing in markets where we can find profitable growth and by reducing expenses to, to maintain our competitiveness, to improve our processes, uh, and to make our customers more happy.